Hey friends, welcome back to Daily Sews and Stuff. Today I have an awesome thing for you. I am doing a tutorial for the PDF Stitcher. I'm gonna take you from downloading it to projecting with it. And I am so excited to show you all the awesome things you can do with it. Uh, if you saw my last video, I interviewed Charlotte Curtis, the person who created this program. And it's just absolutely amazing to me the things that she automated and that we can do so easily now with this really simple program. It might seem a little intimidating, but I promise it's actually very user-friendly and I will walk you through all the steps. I do want to note that I have a Windows computer, so you can run the program on Mac, but there will be sl small little differences and I don't have a Mac where I can show you that. But if you follow the tutorial, you'll be able to roughly do the same thing and I think it will make perfect sense as you follow along. So the first step to using the PDF Stitcher is to download it. You go to the link that is in the description box below. You can choose between the different languages. This here that just says PDF Stitcher is English and these others are the other languages that it's written in. The .exe right there means it's an executable file. This one is a zipped folder. So I click the .exe and I tell it to go straight to my desktop because that's where I want this application to be so I can find it later. And I'm gonna tell it save, and right here you can see that it's downloaded it. So I am done now with my web browser and I'm going to close it. It has put my PDF stitcher right here. The icon may or may not look exactly the same, but the word PDF stitcher is right there. And so now I've got it and I'm able to use it. If I double click, it opens. And the first time you open it, it's going to freak out and tell you, oh my gosh, we don't know who wrote this. This is an unrecognized app. Please keep your PC safe. So we're gonna click more info. And it tells us that the publisher is unknown. It's okay. We're gonna tell it to run anyway. That wasn't an option before, but after you click that more info, it becomes an option. So once you tell it to run anyway, it goes ahead and opens up the PDF Stitcher. This is what it looks like. I'm going to close it, though, just to show you. Every time you open it after that, it just automatically opens just the way a normal program does. So now all we have to do is input the PDF, and it'll spit out the Stitched Together PDF. It's really cool. Let's start by looking at some patterns. I am going to open up Okay, so let's start by <clears throat> looking at the peg leg add-on US letter. Also, how many leggings patterns does one person need? Apparently, all of them. So this is just a letter-sized PDF. You can see right here, there are lots of pages, and we are going to stitch this together with Charlotte's program. Now, we are going to first look up at the top here, where it gives us a printing guide. And we will see that the full pattern pages are pages 16 through 38. So that's helpful. We'll go over here onto the PDF stitcher. We'll select input PDF. I'm going to go open the same PDF I have open here. It actually works just fine to have them both open. We want the peg legs, US letter, add on US letter. That's the same thing. And this told us, what did it say? Pages 16 through 38. So automatically entered the entire document. I'm just going to add a six there. And now it'll say 16 through 38. Now it wants to know how many columns and rows we need. <clears throat> it would be super handy if there were a print guide here. But this one does not have one. So here's how we figure this out. With Patterns for Pirates, I have many times put together their patterns and I know that a pattern you put together you put the letters 
as rows and the numbers as columns. So A1 tells me that there is one row and one column. Right now I'm going to count the rows. So A means one row. B means two rows. <clears throat> C means three rows. D means four rows. E means five rows. And F means six rows. And that's the end. So there are six rows. Guess we should have counted columns first. Oh well. And now we need to know how many columns. So one, two, three, four. All right. A went to four before B started. Right here. I'm looking at this. A4, and then it went to B1. So there were four columns of A's. Now we're going to see what all the other letters do. <clears throat> B goes to five. Okay. But C only goes to four. And D only goes to four. E goes to four. There's only two Fs. Whoa. Okay. So we're going to have to do some fancy things. Since we need up to five with the B, we are going to put five here. But we're going to have to be a little bit tricky about how we put things together. One way we can do this to kind of see how things fit is we can go ahead and right now, generate the PDF and see what it looks like. And that might help us visualize it a little bit better. Uh, but I'm going to feel confident in our visualization and, and go through this. So um, the first page is page 16. Second page is 18. Or, I'm sorry, 17. Now we're on 18. See, it's changing right here for me. 19. So we need through page 19, and then we're going to have a blank page. You know, 16 through 19, so we're going to have a zero. Because <clears throat> I need to have a A5, even though one doesn't exist. So now we're going to do B. B is going to go all the way to B5. And see, there's just these four sizes that need that last little bit of a pattern there. So that's page 24. So here we won't go back, start at 20, and go to 24. Oops, not 224, just 24. See, we went from 19 to 20. We just put a blank page between them. 20 to 24 is going to be fine. That's going to be exactly where we want it to go. And actually, 25 will still be fine, 26, 27, 28. We need another blank page before 29. So we can make this to 29, and then we need another blank page. Oh, I'm sorry, that was wrong. 29 starts the next one. We need to put that through 28. Always double check yourself. All right, so 29 starts us back. And it's only got four D pages. <clears throat> so we're going to need 
yet another zero after 32. And then he goes through e4. which is page 36. And then we need a zero. And then 37 and 38 are just right there next to each other. Okay. So now, Everything should be in the right order, and it's going to make our rows, and then it's going to make our columns, which is just what we needed, left to right, top to bottom. No pages need to be rotated. We're working in inches, and I'm going to add 20 inches of margin around my final output. Now, that is really big, right? That's almost two feet. Seems kind of silly, but it's really nice to be able to move your projection wherever you need it to, and the more space, the better. I... I'm regularly adding 20 inches now, and it's perfect. Here I can choose to overlap or trim my pages. Um, and honestly, it, it makes a difference on paper because white space is white space. But here, the white space comes out transparent most of the time, so it doesn't matter as much, and overlapping is fine. But... We need to know how much to do that. So if you see the top and the left side of the page look totally normal, but the bottom and the right side of the page have space to put the pages together. So we're going to start by going and telling it that the top doesn't need any and the left doesn't need any. But what do we take off the right and the bottom? There are a couple different ways you can do this. You can put it at 100% and grab a ruler and just measure it straight on your screen. You can be projecting it and you can project it at your calibration zoom and be able to do that. Or you can use this measuring tool like I am and measure straight across. And that tells me that it is, and I can see that little number hanging out by my cross arrow, but that is 0.98 inches. I can also right click and complete the measurement and it'll show me here. Oh, see that actually says that it is one inch. Let's do one inch on the right. All right. And I'm going to right click and delete that. Then I'm going to measure at the bottom. All the way to the bottom. Oh, you know, I'm going to right click and cancel. I'm going to go up and do it on one that's a little bit easier to get to the bottom. Come on, cooperate with me. Go straight down. I find this measurement tool to be a little janky, and honestly, most of the time I prefer to do something like grab a real ruler. So I'm going to complete that measurement. Okay. Let's cancel. Let's try one more time. There we go. Complete that measurement. All right. No. Stop that. Complete the measurement. Thank you. So that also said, that actually says it slightly more, but it also says that I wasn't perfectly 90 degrees there. So I'm going to go with one inch for that too. I'm going to delete that. Oh, I'm just going to click delete. Maybe. Oh, for the love. This is ridiculous. Measuring tool off. Cancel measurement. Measuring tool off. Go back to the arrow. There we go. You delete. All right. Closing the measuring tool. All right. 
Now I'm going to tell it to generate the PDF. Now, because I ignored this, it's popping up a window asking me what I want to save it as. So what I like to do is I go and click where I opened it from. It was the peg legs add on US letter. So that automatically types it for me. And now I'm going to add the word stitched to the end. And then when I look over here, there it is. So if I open this, automatically it has put my pattern together perfectly. And I've got all the pieces that I need. And I can still go over here and choose which layer I need. I've got it perfectly within here. I've got this nice big margin that allows me to move. Let's see if we type this in. It allows me to move any which way I need to. And I will be happily able to use my pattern projected exactly how I want. Now, this is still not optimized for projector. All of these grain lines are the same. That grain line is the same, that grain line is the same, that grain line is the same. But when we come down here, these grain lines are going the opposite way. That one's the same and that one's going the opposite way. So they're not all going the exact same way, but this is an easy fix with a 90 degree turn. There's not awkward angles anymore. That's important because if we look at the peg legs add-on AO, this one, which is a beloved pattern of mine, you can see all the markings I've done on it. This one has a couple pieces that are, at least a one piece, that's on the, on an angle that can't be done by rotating your screen. You have to actually move your fabric. And that can be really frustrating. Well, instead of doing that, if you need this piece, instead of trying to move your fabric around, grab it from here instead. Also, if you'll notice, there's not a lot of moving that I can do. I, I can't really put this wherever I want it on my screen. It's, it's kind of stuck. Well, we can fix that. I'm going to go here. I'm going to select the input PDF. And I'm going to use the AO. And it's only one page, so we're not going to have any rows or columns. It's just the one thing. We're going to leave the 20 inches on the outside, but we're going to make all that zero. We're going to generate again. It's going to ask me again what I want to do. And I can add the word stitched or margins or whatever it is I'd like to use. And now I have space to move wherever. I need so that my projection is perfectly on my cutting board. So I have shown you how to insert blank pages when you need to make the rows and columns work. I have shown you how to decide the page trim. There is also a resource in the group where they are keeping track of the page trims for each pattern. So you can always check that. I've shown you all of the features. And I've shown you my favorite thing, which is to cr create white space around AOs. And I've shown that it opens a new PDF. The layers are preserved. And your notes are often preserved, as I noted before. Now, I do want to show one more pattern. I want to show this urban legs pattern because Ellie and Mac has a, a pattern assembly diagram and several other companies do, but I'm going to use this one for this example. So when a pattern has an assembly diagram, it makes it much easier to decide the rows and columns. So page one is page 23. 
All right. We're going to print through 40. Yep, 23 to 40. And we're going to look at that pattern assembly diagram in just a second here. All right. So we want the urban legs. We need 23 through 40. Now we can look at the pattern assembly diagram to show us exactly how many rows and columns we need. So this has got one, two, three, four, five, six columns and one, two, three rows. And it makes a complete rectangle when it's done. There are no blank pages that need to be inserted anywhere. So we are not going to worry about adding any zeros or anything in there. It's a very straightforward one. I do want it to add a margin around it. And I am going to need to figure out where and how to overlap or trim my pages. The different line colors are the different places that you would need to cut it were you printing it, you know, normally on paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this gap between this blue line and the edge and have that trimmed because that way we won't have this extra pink line right here. So I'm going to use, I'm going to go back and I'm going to tell this to trim rather than overlap. And again, the top and the left-hand side, I'm going to leave alone. It's just the right and the bottom that I'm going to uh, have trimmed. I'm going to use this measuring tool that I really don't like, but if I do it the other way, you won't see me doing it. I'm going to measure from the blue line to the edge right here. Come on. Okay. I'm going to complete that measurement and see that it is, oh, my angle's a little bit off. It's 0 0.88. I'm going to say it's, it's probably 0.8. Nine, but we'll say that's 0.88. That's fine. I'm so sleepy. It's a bit late in there. So we're going to do 0.88. And over here, we'll go to the bottom and do a second one. Okay, it's saying 0.73. So we'll do that. we'll generate this PDF and see if that was right or not. So these are the urban legs. And I'm just going to take that off and write stitched. I'll open that up. Let's see. Okay, there we go. You can see those are lining up. They might not be exactly perfect, but it is certainly as close, if not better, than I would have done it printing and taping. So I feel fairly confident in using this pattern, just how it is. And again, because I added that margin around, I'm able to move it in whatever direction I need to in order to put my pattern just where I want it on a projected image. All right, so that is the PDF Stitcher app. I hope that you find it as helpful as I did. It's so very easy to use, especially whenever you don't have a lot of trimming or anything to do. And it's very, very straightforward in what it's asking you to do. And then it makes it super simple. So thank you so much to Charlotte Curtis for creating this app and for coming on the channel to be interviewed and for thinking it was such a great idea for me to share this tutorial with you guys. All right, friends, I hope that was helpful to you. You can find a link in the description box to donate to Charlotte, to access the GitHub where you can download the PDF Stitcher program, and for the Projectors for Sewing group where you can ask questions along with down here in the comments. 
please do uh, ask any questions that you have. Like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel so you can see what's coming. I have some exciting things planned for this year. I have an interview with Missy Poor who started the Projectors for Sewing group plans. I have an ultra short throw projector that I bought and I have plans to video that uh, set up from beginning to end along with a collaboration with my husband on creating a mount for that and the one I got has an interactive pin so I'll be trying to figure out that feature and share that with you too. I'm really excited about the things I'm putting out this year. I'm trying to make my content more informative and a higher quality than I have before but that also means that I'll be doing a little bit less so look for one to two videos a month rather than trying to get a video out every week. And as you guys know, if you've been following along, I'm also in a rental right now and we have plans to move in the next few months. So, you know, I'm going to do what I can to keep up with my channel, but uh, this doesn't, this isn't monetized. It doesn't bring any uh, income to our family. So sometimes it gets put behind other more important things. So. I'm really thankful to all of you for sharing and commenting and subscribing and all the things that you've done to help me grow this channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching my videos. Like, subscribe, and comment.